Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Parallax Abstraction, and welcome to another episode of Retro Flashback, showcasing gaming's roots for a new generation. Today we are going to be taking a look at something a little bit different from what I've been talking about up to now. We're actually going to be taking a look at a title on the PC, but it's actually a compilation title of what many would consider the one of the greatest shmup series of all time. It's pretty neat. This uh, is Raiden Legacy, as you can see here. This recently dropped on good old games without too much fanfare, actually. It kind of dropped out of nowhere. And I found out about it because I follow good old games on Twitter. And I was like, wait, Raiden? They don't mean that Raiden, do they? So I went and checked it out, and sure enough, this is what it was. So I grabbed it, and uh, being a huge shmup guy and a big fan of the Raiden series, I was like, I gotta, I gotta see what this is about. And uh, yeah, we've got it here, so I'm going to go over this for you guys, because this is pretty cool. It's several different Raiden games for only 10 bucks, and because it's an emulation package, this will pretty much run on anything. I was running this on my work laptop at lunch. This is on a gaming PC right now, but I imagine this thing will run on just about anything with a screen, so that's really, really cool. And I wanted to see if it lived up to the price they're asking. So this is put out by... I don't know if they're called .mu or .emu or I don't know, I can't pronounce it. I call it .mu. But basically they're a French company uh, that's been around for a little while now and their specialty is doing conversions of old games on new systems. So they've done a bunch of ports of older titles for a lot of stuff for mobile phones. Uh, and from what I understand, unfortunately, I'm still stuck on a friggin' BlackBerry 9900 because my work pays for it. I know, I know, I know, I hate it too. But I, I don't get exposure to much of their stuff as a result of that. But um, I've, I've heard their stuff is really, really good. And they're the ones who put this out. Um, it has a couple of different logos on it. It has logo, f logo for... I'm probably going to mispronounce this again. It's either Seibu Kayatsu or Sibu Kayatsu, which is the company that originally made these games who technically still exists pretty much just to license them out but they haven't been developing games for a while uh, most of their key staff left to form uh, Moss which is uh, the developer who has actually made uh, the latest two Raiden games Raiden 3 and 4 which are both pretty good actually and uh, this has also got the Success Corporation name on it. Success has been responsible for some other uh, Raiden-related conversion projects. They actually did the uh, Raiden Fighters Aces collection for the Xbox 360, which uh, is actually very, very good as well. And some of these games are in that package as well. So anyway, you've been staring at this screen long enough, so let's get this rolling. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about here is this little wrapper that it comes with. It's... Pretty lame. But, I mean, it does the job okay, but it has some really strange flaws to it that we're going to go over here. So you see you got this nice little funky electro jazz. Uh, you know, good good uh, menu music for Japanese emulation collections. And we've got everything laid out here. So here's the odd part. So this package includes the original Raiden, Raiden Fighters, Raiden Fighters 2, and Raiden Fighter, Fighters Jet. It does not include Raiden 2, Raiden DX, or Raiden 3 and 4, obviously, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure why that is. I can't find an explanation for it. It's not really a, a bad thing. I mean, Raiden 2 was good, but the, personally, I think the Raiden Fighters games are the three best Raiden titles. Uh, Raiden Fighters Jet, in particular, is one of the best shmups, personally, for me, I've ever played. But uh, so that's what you get in the collection. So it's four games for 10 bucks, which is pretty darn good if you ask me. The, the Raiden Fighters collection for the Xbox 360 was either 30 or 40 when it came out, and it only had, it had a similarly limited scope. So, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to Raiden first. So here's the interesting thing. So you can go, there are options for this. Now there's well, this thing called HD Music. I can't find any description of what this is supposed to be. I presume this just takes the music and outputs it at a higher bit rate or something like that so it sounds a little better. I can't hear a huge difference between it, but I haven't played that long with it either and it's, you know, my sound setup may not be be, uh, be good for that. You can adjust the overall volume, can't adjust sound effects and music independently, but you couldn't really do that in the arcade games either, so whatever. Video options. 
very, very basic, as you can see. These are old games that, you know, predate gaming on PCs. Well, they don't predate gaming on PCs, but they, you know, this is long before you, this level of tweakability was here. You can adjust the resolution if you want. The This package does scale uh, to fit whatever resolution you have. So even though I'm playing this in 1080p, it still looks pretty good. You can go between full screen and windowed. I'm in full screen for capture. Video filtering, again, I don't quite know what this means. Uh, I think this just, a lot of emulation packages will apply sort of a smoothing filter to the graphics to try to make them look a little better. Some do it okay, some do it not so okay. Uh, I've just been running with it on, I think it looks fine. So this is the scaling option. So the aspect ratio, you can either run it in its original mode or you can have it basically stretch it to full screen. I find full screen looks okay and for the purposes of this I'm going to use that because otherwise it may be hard for you guys to see what's going on. <clears throat> but you can play with this at your leisure. And then you've got game options. Now this is where things get a little strange. So there's no online play in this game, which doesn't surprise me, um, but you can play, all of these games have two-player capabilities, and you can do that locally if you want. So first thing you're going to see right here is you can have an option to have the game auto-fire your guns. That is really bad, because aside from the fact, and you can see I'm switching languages here, I've never done this, I just wanted to see what it came with, and it turns out quite substantial. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, you don't want to do the auto-fire because, number one, that's not the way these games were made to be played, and number two, the auto-fire is really slow and really inconsistent. If you try to play with that, you are probably going to get horribly murdered and frustrated. Uh, I tried it with it, and it, it just doesn't play properly. I really, really do not recommend that. And then you can do your controls. Now, this is where things get kind of dumb. Now, I have an Xbox 360 pad plugged in. Shmups are, in my opinion, best played with a game pad. This game does have full keyboard support, and it does work fine. But for whatever reason, every time I've started the game up, even with my controller plugged in, it goes back to keyboard by default. Every time I have to go in and change it back to game pad before I play. I don't know why they did that. I hope that maybe they'll put an update out to this to correct that, because that's really, really frustrating. Like, considering you have to go several menus deep in order to change it, I, I don't know why this thing can't just go, oh, you have a gamepad in, and that's what you had it set to last time, so I'm just going to use that. Weird oversight. I don't know why. Also, this, by default, is not configured optimally for an Xbox 360 pad. So you're going to see here, this is the default configuration. I don't know what gamepad they designed this around, but all the buttons are bound to really, really weird... Uh, places on the 360 pad if you use the default. So you'll see here I'm going to change this. So that's the A button I just selected. That's the B button. This is the start button. And that's the back button. And you can see there, like, when I rebound the shoot button, like, by default, the pause key would have been A. <laughs> so I'm like, what? Not a big deal. The good thing is it does retain these settings between sessions. So even though you have to tell it each time that you want to use a gamepad, you can rest assured that your button bindings will stick. So that's good at least. That would be ridiculous if you had to rebind the buttons each time. The cool thing too is you can set, if you want to play two player, you can have one player use the keyboard and another player use a controller. Um, I don't know what happens if you plug in two different controllers. I don't have two wired 360 pads. So I don't quite know what happens in that situation. I would hope it would have support for two controllers, but like I said, this wrapper is kind of bare bones, so I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see about that. So, and if you go to more, there's not there's nothing there basically except for the credits. So these are the credits from uh, from dot emu or dot mu. Sorry. And you can see these are the, the people who did it. Very small team. I mean, that makes sense. This is a, a, an emulation project. It's not exactly, a, it's not the kind of thing you need a AAA size team for. So that's cool. Anyway, so let's go. We're going to get to the, we're going to get into the meat of this sucker here. So first off, this is Raiden. Now this is the other cool thing. You can play standard arcade mode. You can play mission mode, which allows you to select basically as a level select. And you can play training mode, which allows you to... It's basic... Well, it's what it says. It's a training mode. You basically 
it's it's cheater mode for the most part, which is cool. And you can also up and, up and down the difficulty. Um, there's actually, funny enough, only medium and hard, which is kind of hilarious. But the funny thing that a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of arcade games back in the day actually did allow the operators of the games using dip switches to alter the difficulty of many of them. Most of them didn't change it, but there are, I do remember having some discussions with people going, I swear to God, this game was a lot easier in this arcade than this arcade. And uh, that was the reason why they were actually able to do that. And you can tweak stuff here as well, which is a nice little touch. Uh, it's easy enough to do that in an emulation, so that's cool. So you see here, we're switching between, you can also switch between the modes that you want. So we're going in single player. I have the uh, thing bound to the 360 pad, the controls. So let's just go straight up arcade mode. So you can see here, this is it scaled up. Doesn't look, doesn't look bad. It does look a little. So you see here, we turned auto fire off. So I'm actually doing this. The gun will fire basically as fast as you can mash the button, which is one thing that's cool about the Raiden series. Is um, some games still limited how much you could fire, even when you were really banging on the button. This one will respond as quick as you want, which is really, really cool. So as you can see, it looks pretty decent. I, I mean, it, when you're trying to scale a very, very low res image to a high res screen, there's only so much you can do with it without it starting to look distorted or a little um, blurry. I think they did a pretty good job here. Uh, I think this this looks pretty snazzy. I've, I've used some scaled up emulations before. Hi, cows. I'm just sitting in the war zone, grazing on the grass. I've used some uh, emulator packages before that try to do some scale up and don't do nearly as good a job of it as this one does. I will say that at least on my monitor here, I'm not sure how much this is coming across in the video, but on my monitor, there is a little bit of motion blur in this mode with high speed objects. So some of these guys that are flying onto the screen very quick, I'm definitely getting some, uh, some blur effect. Certainly, oh man. Yeah, this is also one hit death, just so you know. Uh, the motion blur is not that bad. It's not affecting my ability to play the game. But if that's if you're someone for whom that's a bit of an issue, or you are a, uh, a oh, dropped the bomb, dropped it too late. If you're someone who's a bit of a visual purist when it comes to this stuff, and hey, you know what? I'm a hardcore retro enthusiast. I will not fault you whatsoever for for having high standards when it comes to that stuff. Then um, you might want to play this in its in its original ratio. Uh, and or play it on a lower resolution. You could certainly do that. I mean, I run my desktop in 1080p because this is a 1080p monitor, but, you know, it can do lower resolutions. Though, depending on the quality of your monitor, you may run into your own issues with that because basically some monitors, especially cheaper monitors, don't downscale very well. So if you ask them to run in lower than their maximum resolution, the picture quality will degrade severely. I'm running halfway decent Samsung monitors. These are not, you know, super duper high-end pro-grade monitors, but I don't skimp on my display because I have to stare at the thing so much. So uh, it, I, I could drop it if I wanted, but to me, a, a collection like this, which I'm really playing in a more casual sense, uh, I, it, it doesn't matter that much to me. So, So you saw the basic concept there. I mean... These are shmups, and Raiden plays the classic formula. You know, you are shooting your way through a level. You have guns that you pick up upgrades for as you go. You have bombs, which... Well, in some shmups, this is one thing it does a little different. In mo a lot of shmups, bombs are screen-clearing things. Basically, things get a little bit too hairy, and you hit the button, and everything dies. Or if you're playing a boss, you hit that a couple of times, and the boss dies. They do it a little bit differently in here. As you saw earlier on, I was kind of getting screwed because I was pushing the bomb button and I was getting killed in the delay the, between when I hit the button and when the bomb deployed. And that's the thing. There is a delay in this game. It's not instantaneous, which it is in a lot of other titles. And in addition to that... Yay, I am number one. And in addition to that, the bombs don't clear the screen. They clear a large area, but they don't clear the whole screen. So you can see that there's a, uh, a little bit of a extra challenge element there, which I think is pretty cool. 
So you see here, you can continue if you want. Now, this is the annoying part. You see I keep bringing this up here. That's because I'm, I'm hitting the pause button. And there is one other thing that I'm going to say is very, very annoying about that. I should actually reverse the start and pause buttons because the start button is what allows you to continue. But it's actually bound to the back button now. So I, I kind of screwed that up. But, um, so you do have a limited number of continues, which does make this a little more challenging. That's what training mode is for if you just want to blow through it and try to figure everything out. Okay. So yeah, the bomb mechanic is a little bit more challenging in this. It's not quite as forgiving as it is in other shmups, which is kind of cool. I like that. You know, it, it does make things a, a little bit trickier. The other thing I was going to point out as well with this pause screen, I'm going to bring it back up here. So here's a, another really annoying part about this game's controller implementation. I can't do anything in this screen with the 360 pad. If I want to go into the options or quit or resume, I have to use the mouse like that. Uh, my capture setup is hiding the mouse pointer, I think, so I don't think you saw that. But yeah, I, again, that's a really lame oversight, one that would have been trivially easy to fix. And like, if you're someone, if you're one of these people who I hope to be very soon, who runs their gaming PC through their television, where they're playing stuff and don't necessarily have access to, ah, I got the laser this time, and who doesn't necessarily always have access to your keyboard and mouse, that's a real dumb oversight. I mean, this is a game that's screaming to be played on a television, and that certain menus, really, all, well, actually, all the menus in that wrapper don't have controller support is just that's not really forgivable. Like, that's very easy to implement. And yeah, I really hope that .mu releases a patch for that to, to add that in. Because, I mean, you have the hooks in here to respond to controller inputs, so why not make the menus do it, too? I, I really, really hope they, they, they do that. Because, uh, yeah, if I was running this through my TV and I didn't have one of those little uh, miniature keyboard wireless mice keyboard things, that would be really, really frustrating to deal with anytime I wanted to change games. So, you're getting the basic idea here. So this is Ryan. This is the original. This is the classic. And it is... It's still very, very good. It's not... It's a tough shmup. It's not really a bullet hell. Uh, basically, a bullet hell shmup is a game that is a... that just throws so much enemy ammunition on the screen at you at once that half the art of playing the game is not just killing the enemies, but dodging the bullet patterns that they throw at you. This game is much more classic in that it, it does get very, very frantic, but it's a bit slower paced, and it's mostly about destroying enemies and dealing with what they put at you, but not necessarily, you know, it's not as much of a puzzle game, let's say that. And yeah, that's kind of what I prefer. I have nothing against bullet hell shmups. I think bullet hell shmups are very, very cool. But I prefer, me personally, more uh, standard fare, I guess. So you see there, when you tell it that you don't want to continue, it takes you back to the menu. And it actually, the wrapper actually realizes, hey, I got a high score. Very cool. Now, I'm not 100% sure here, but I think it's... The other thing that I think could be a really major oversight with this is... I don't think this saves high scores in between sessions either, which again, I really don't understand that. Like, this doesn't have online leaderboards, and that's fine. I, you know, online leaderboards would be cool, but at the same time, that requires maintaining servers and stuff, and if you're going to do that for a little $10 nostalgia package, that might be a bit much to ask. But not maintaining scores locally, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem to have done that. I've run it a couple of times, and the scores seem to be resetting, so... Maybe that's my installation. I'm not running a, a really wacko configuration here. I'm running a Windows 7 PC that's, that's uh, you know, running fairly normal setup. So, I don't know. Um, if it's not saving, that's also pretty lame as well. Because these are score attack games. I mean, it should keep your history. But, oh well. So, that's riding, that's riding 1. Now we're going to get into my favorite part of the, the Raiden series, which are the Raiden Fighters games. So, these are very, very cool. I have the package, the retail package for the Xbox 360, which I think is kind of hard to find in retail form now, but I do know that you can still buy it on Xbox Games On Demand. I think it's 20 bucks, and it's really good. It's really well put together. It has achievements, it has online leaderboards, it has a whole bunch of other stuff. It's really, really slick. But this does it very nicely as well. 
So Raiden Fighters Jet is my favorite Raiden Fighters game, but we're going to go through them all here. Supposedly, these games actually have a plot, but shmup plots are utterly pointless. I don't know why anybody even bothers to try, but some people do. So, so you get to here's the cool part about this is you get to pick different planes or different fighters that have different traits, as you can see. So that's a big step up from the original Raiden game. So I'm on a clock here, so I'm going to pick this one, which is the sort of balanced one. Okay, that's a little redundant, redundant, but sure. Also, these games have wicked awesome, like, hyper-techno music. You're just like, yeah! I feel like you should be on coke or something when you're playing these games. Their game's built for Rob Ford. Eh, stupid timely humor. That's because I'm from Ottawa and I like to make fun of Toronto. If you're not from Toronto, you probably wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, so... You can see here that these are a bit of a graphical step up because the uh, these came quite a bit later. The original Raiden came out in 1990. These came out in the mid to late 90s. So they were running on much better technology at the time. And we get much better fidelity and much snazzier hyper-techno music. So these games I really enjoy. Now, they they uh, they are more frantic than the original Raiden titles. They're still not bullet hell, but things do move a lot faster. As you can see, it's throwing a lot more enemy fodder at me simultaneously here. A lot of upgrades coming in. And as you can see by that music change, the levels are also a lot shorter. This is the boss. And that was kind of the thing with Raiden fighters. They were much more manic, much more fast-paced. Not necessarily shorter, definitely not less challenging. I played a lot of this on the 360, so you can see I'm actually uh, doing fairly well this time out. I, I played a lot more of these than I have the original Raiden. And you can see the scoring system is frantic as well. Like, I've already earned like a bazillion points, and you can see how fast they're going up as I'm doing stuff to this boss. Uh, this is a very, very high scoring series. And you see, it just moves you straight on. It's just like, yep, you got the boss, on you go. And you can see here as well, we're not only getting weapon power-ups, but when you take out enemies, and this is a common shmup thing, uh, when you're taking out waves of enemies, they're actually dropping little additional point power-ups. And it's kind of funny, because it's really tempting you to go after these, because as you can see, they float in place and then drop down. You also get additional bonuses. You might have seen it flashing up top there for things like Quick Shot, which is basically taking out enemies extremely fast after they come on the screen. The later games expand on that mechanic with other things. But as you can see here, I'm not actually getting a lot of points for these gems. This system gets improved substantially as the Raiden Fighter series goes on, and you're gonna see that when, once we get there. But you can see that I'm only getting, you know, anywhere from like 50 to a couple of hundred points at a shot here, which is almost pointless because you're like, well, <laughs> you know, look at how fast my score is going up just from killing dudes and hitting bosses. But you see here, it's a multiplier system. So you see how now we're up to 5,000? Now we're starting to talk about real money. because the And that's based on just staying alive. Staying alive and killing more dudes. So those, those multipliers will go up. And that's your incentive to really try to keep yourself going as long as you can. This is another neat little bonus here. See where it says defend the house? And you get a ton of points for that? Yeah, so basically this thing, before it starts to attack you, tries to attack those little houses along there. And if you use a bomb on it just as it's about to shoot the house, it will miss its opportunity to. And you will get rewarded with ridiculous amounts of points for that. So basically 100,000 a shot which is substantial, because you see as a result of that, I've now already beaten the factory high score on this game, which is a really, really weird high number for some strange reason. Which is, it's not in the 360 version, which I find kind of interesting. But you sort of get the, uh, the gist here. So they really, these games are, though the Raiden series has all, always been about score attack, the fighter series, they seem to really put a lot more effort into that and really make it more focused around that. The levels are shorter, it's it's much more frantically paced, 
and it has all these little bonus tricks, and it doesn't explain any of this. So, you know, the, the multiplier on the little bonus gem system there, the whole idea of taking out enemies quickly, the whole defend the house thing that we just saw, these are all things you learn by playing it. So this, now we're get, we've gotten through the mini-bosses, now we're at the main guy. And these bosses are pretty epic. You're going to see here. So we're dealing with this ship here. And you can see how many different targets it has on it. And let this come up here. Yeah, his music is kind of nuts. And I walked right into that. So... Yeah, so you see there's even little sub-ships here that you have to deal with. The bosses in this game are, are actually quite something. They're, they're very, very challenging, and they're very long sequences, which is very neat. But what I loved about these games was, yeah, the score attack element is very, very cool because it really... Yeah, I mean, in a, now, to be fair, these were arcade games, and really this mechanic was probably designed around monetization, i.e. get as much out of the... you know, get as many quarters out of people as possible. But it really encouraged you to learn by doing. You learned the best way to utilize and exploit the bonus system by playing the game more. That's how you learned all the little tricks. It was all sort of done through Easter eggs, which I think is a really neat way to go about it. And while this game could be challenging and definitely rewarded experienced play, it was not like a bullet hell where... Bullet Hells, like I kind of said before, Bullet Hells are as much puzzle games as they are anything else. And that's cool, but it's not for everybody. And that's kind of the... And that these games are much more traditional, but contain some of the more manic elements of that. All right, so you get the idea of what we got from there. We made a new high score again. And that's the first ride in Fighters. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you guys a, a little bit of everything from uh, from this, so you can sort of get a, an idea of this whole package. I will say that interface quirks aside, I really think this is a steal at ten bucks. You're getting the same amount of games as you got in the uh, Ride and Fighters collection for the Xbox 360. Not as many. Oh, uh, I love English. Look at this. So this one actually focuses a little bit more on the quote-unquote plot of the Raiden Fighters series. But it's also neat too, because this one and Jet actually have intro movies. Nice little rendered graphics there. This was pretty pretty impressive at the time. You know, Raiden Fighters 2 came out in 1997, so this was, uh, this was pretty neat to see at the time. Little pre-rendered things here. There's our crazy manic techno. But I, I think this package is a pretty good deal for 10 bucks. You're not getting some of the ancillary features of the Xbox 360. Yeah, that cuts off rather abruptly. You don't get some of the features of the 360 version like leaderboards, like achievements, if you're into that. Uh, and the front end layer on it is certainly not nearly as good. But if you can deal with these little quirks, I mean, the games are emulated extremely well, and they play extremely well. All right, let's get this started here. So again, play select, player select, you actually get a wider selection of fighters to go, to go from this time. A little bit of a lag in this menu, which I find kind of strange. So I'm just going to pick the all-rounder again. Except it says push start, but the start button's not working. There we go. Decision! Buck up our troops fighting at the front and attack the following reinforcements. Violet Head! Violet Head. It's not even Violet Head. Oh god, Violet Head's even funnier. So you see here, have some a little bit of graphical improvements. We're basically running on the same tech here as the last Raiden Fighters, but... The animations are definitely better. It's a little hard to see because you guys are watching this at 30 frames a second. All these games play in 60. Uh, so the animation quality is a little bit better. The backgrounds are definitely better. There's a nice little reflection effect in the water there that's pretty cool. But this is basically just more riding fighters. Uh, you know, they added a story... <laughs> story. And some uh, neat little pre-rendered cutscenes, but that's kind of it. But that's fine. It's, you know, it's it's more of that. It's new enemies, it's new levels, new challenges. So that's always good. So 
So we've got a, got a very similar concept here. This one I did find harder than the original Raiden Fighters. Like, despite how decently I was playing there, and I, I attribute that to the amount of time I put into the 360 edition, Raiden Fighters was definitely not super hard as shmup go, shmups go. Challenging? Yes, definitely. But it was not, you know, it was not a ball buster. This one amped it up a little bit. <laughs> destroyed at a time, so destroy <laughs> destroyed at a time, that's, uh, that's also some good English right there. So destroyed at a time is basically multi-kill. Um, that's basically that you destroyed on the, on a boss target. You destroyed multiple sub targets at exactly the same moment, and you get a bonus for that as well. So, hey, see, this is weird with this one. See, this one, this one has the uh, standard one million high score, whereas the other one had that really weird, weird uh, odd number. I wonder if that's a bug or like a high score from a tester that got left in the final code by accident. Kind of funny. So you yeah, destroyed it at a time. It's just multi-kill. That's that's all that is. Um, but it gets a it, you know again, it's one of those little Easter eggs that you have to find as you play, especially if you don't understand what the heck it's saying there. And you can see the bonuses are fairly hefty. I do find that the bonuses for things like quick shot and whatnot are a little beefier than they were in the last game. They seem to be more intent on rewarding you for finding and utilizing those uh, little additional score attack Easter eggs, which is cool. I I like that. I think that's something that should be heavily rewarded. Especially if you want people to keep finding them all. Well, you know, if you give the indication that, hey, you're going to get some fat loot from doing this. I think that's very smart. And you see I beat the factory high score there already. Yeah, I'm still having lots of fun, fun with these. I mean, I will say that unless you really, really want the original Raiden, if you have... The Raiden Fighters collection, uh, Raiden Fighters Aces on the Xbox 360. I don't know how much value this package is going to be to you, um, unless you either want it on a PC, maybe for your lunch hour or something else, or you want the original Raiden. The 360 version, while more expensive, is a better package. You get more features, you get online leaderboards, you get achievements, you get a better front end. And it's definitely, yeah, it, it, it definitely, the, it, this is better suited to a TV than a monitor, I would say, at least in terms of the way that collection scales things up. That collection did involve the same company. Um, it involved Success Corp. It also involved, I believe it was Gulti Company as well, which was not involved in this. So I'm not sure who developed the 360 version entirely, or if Success is just, was maybe just the Japanese publisher or something like that. But that version definitely is a better overall package, but it's it's twice the price at least. So you know you have to kind of you have to kind of gauge that. And yeah, getting the original ride is a nice bonus <clears throat> if you can live with the fact that the front end on this you know requires a keyboard and mouse, and that you've got to reset your control option at least in terms of which one you want to utilize each time you start it up. I mean, if you're using this game, if you're playing this game at a actual computer, then that's really trivial. It doesn't really matter. But if you're playing, uh, yes, I love the quick shot on that train. But if you are going to be playing this through a TV, yeah, that might be a bit of a pain in the ass for you. So I don't know. We'll see about that. So this is another really good boss encounter. Uh, these trains sort of zip up and down both sides, and as you saw there earlier, if you time it right, you can get some crazy quick shot bonus off of that. I actually remembered that kind of from muscle memory. And you'll see here that the gem system is exactly the same. You stay alive longer, the gems become worth more, etc., etc. Raiden Fighter's Jet, which is what we're going to be taking a look at next, really changed that formula up, and in a way that I think is really, really good. That's why it's what makes it my favorite Raiden game. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to let myself detonate, because this video is getting kind of long as it is. Da, 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 da. All right, and we're out of that one. New high score. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we come to the piece de resistance, as you will. So this is Raiden Fighter's jet. Oh. Okay, this seems to have remembered that it's previously played the intro movie this time. This is a good one. The 
let you guys see this. I presume that's your fighter, or at least the agency under which you're working through here. A wing to open up to an untrodden domain. What? Fight of a person aiming at a limit begins now. Screw you, limit. I'm coming for you. Oh, look at that fire. Look at that 16-bit fire. I don't know what tuning electronic is either, but it's cool. <laughs> I don't know. I think that's kind of neat in its own cheesy way. I love stuff like that. So once again, you got two difficulties. You got your arcade mode, you got your mission mode, you got your training mode. We go into the arcade. Another big selection. I can't remember what my favorite fighter was in this, but I'm going to take the uh, Aegis again. Decision! Now, this is the weird part. Uh, this also has something to do with the quote-unquote plot, I think. It says simulate mission there. I don't know if you're playing in the real world in this game or if the plot is that you're supposed to be playing in some kind of crazy VR holodeck thing. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But you can actually, depending on how you progress, uh, you can actually advance these missions in different ways. You might see that that based on how I'm playing here, because I'm actually playing pretty well, you might see that I actually advance further in uh, further in the mission screens. You, there is a way to do that. It's kind of weird. It doesn't make much difference, to be honest with you. But uh, it's kind of a neat concept. But here's the, the awesome thing about this. Now, I'm going to try to talk about this a little more in the next level, but you might have seen all these, the, the, the sort of gem uh, things that we're dropping, the score options that you get. Well, you might have seen them floating around. Well, you might have seen the number one. They don't look like ribbons anymore. They kind of look like little uh, metals, I guess. And in fact, I think that's what they're called in this game. And you may have seen them floating around and then at one point maybe even combining. Yeah, that's what's cool about this game score system versus the other ones. This was a crazy innovation that they made that I'm really surprised more games didn't rip off. So what happens is, I'm going to take this guy out and show you how it works. that techno. Reporting battle result data. So this just gives you a little breakdown of the stuff you, you did, which is kind of cool. So you see we moved up to level 5 now. You can change that depending on how you perform. So you're going to see here, so there's the normal weapon power-ups, like the missile one. So you see that little metal? Now I could have gone over that like that and picked up picked up what it was worth, right? But the way the medals advance in this game is not the way the ribbons advance in the other games, which is just staying alive longer. See that? See how it grew? Yeah. So this is what happens. If you... The longer you let these medals float... Well, if, if you get floating medals, because you see some of them are static, if you get medals that float and you don't touch them, they will eventually combine. Uh, I let that... I grabbed that one. They will eventually combine... And if there are static metals in the world, if you have a metal floating beside you, because once they combine, they will come down to you, and you see you can be running two of them at a time. If you go over a static metal on the ground, that will also combine into it, but it requires you to do it. It won't do it for you. And as you can see, the, the more you let those combine, the bigger they get. And the bigger they get, the higher their score value is. And you can, if you are a friggin' fiendish super ninja, which I most certainly am not, you can let those score, th those medals can combine to award as much as 2 million points. Actually, a little bit more than that, but approximately 2 million points from one pickup, which is bonkers, even by, by the really high s scoring standards of this particular game. And, and I think that is a really, really neat scoring innovation. It really rewards precision play and, frankly, just being ballsy. Because if you want to pick up a bunch of the, them at lower values, you'll do okay with that. And you'll probably place pretty decently on the leaderboards as a result. But if you are willing to really be patient, really bide your time, move slowly, and let those things build up, you can just rack up unbelievable score and 
that's a whole element of challenge. It's basically a metagame. It's like, hey, you got to try to finish this game, but at the same time, you got to try to play it really skillfully so that you can combine your medals and get yourself some really, really crazy scores going on. And I think that's really, really cool. So you see here, there we go. So you, you see how it's changing. And there, I forget how many levels there are for that, if you will, like how many um, evolutions the metal can take before it hits 2 million, but it's a lot, and they all look different. So they actually did little tiny sprites for every one of those different metal stages. It's clear that this scoring system was a passion project that someone at Seibu Kayatsu had and really wanted to sit down and spend the time to, to put this together. And clearly somebody worked a lot of overtime assembling that system. And I think it's great. And as far as I know, this is the only game... This is definitely the only Seibu Kayatsu game that used it because this was Seibu Kayatsu's last game before they ceased, uh, or last game in, in uh, the Raiden series anyway, before they ended up ceasing game development and just became a, a licensing company. But I, I have never seen this in another game. I have not played every shmup, but I have played a lot of shmups, and I've never seen the, a system like this again. And it is, it is really a shame because it is... A, brilliant innovation. I haven't played Raiden 3 and 4 for a little while, but I don't think Moss actually even implemented that in their games, and they are, you know, they're some of the original developers from Seibu Kayatsu, but they also developed, those were, you know, proper, if you will, Raiden games as opposed to Raiden Fighters games. Raiden Fighters was considered a bit of a spin-off series and not the sort of proper Raiden games. But this is far and away my, my favorite Raiden game. I like the whole series. They're all good in their own ways, but I think the, the, the sort of manic gameplay is at its best in this, and I think this scoring system is just utterly brilliant. It really, when you're a relatively impatient person like I am, it really is a test of will to try to not just grab what you can with those tokens and to let them build up. It's really... Uh, it's really something special in terms of schmuck gameplay mechanics. And yeah, it's a shame that this series, that the, the, the fighter series in particular didn't get to continue on longer than it did because I really, really like it. But you're sort of getting the idea here. I hope this has given you a taste of the entire package offered here. All right, we're gonna let this go out. I gotta see if I can find a soundtrack for these games, because man, that, that techno music is just bonkers awesome. And another high score here. So, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is the Raiden Legacy Collection, which is avail available right now on PC from good old games, GOG.com. Right now it's ten bucks. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic collection of the essential Seibu Kayatsu shmups. Uh, it was, I presume, developed by Success Corporation and published by .mu, and it is available on PC right now. Uh, I'm not sure if a Mac version is available, but it, it might be. This would certainly be easy enough to do uh, to do on that platform. And I think it's really good. I, it's got some flaws. This wrapper on the front is not very good and could really do with some improvements, which I hope they make. But the emulation is spot on. And the the core games are very very good, and it's a it's an excellent series. And for ten bucks, it's half the price of a similar collection on 360. That's maybe presented a little better, but you know, you're getting more for less here in terms of just raw games, and that's never a bad thing. Check it out if you're into shmups. I think it's well worth it. My name has been Parallax Abstraction. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.